eight feet wide. It's gouged out underneath it. Now just think about all of the beings that live in, in that environment that will no longer be living in that environment. The habitat will be gone. Now imagine that not a mile long, but 300 miles along, over these mountains, through the, under these rivers, through the streams, near your wells, within 50 feet of houses. It's a, it's a basic abomination. It's, it's a, everybody's worst nightmare, I would think. And this cemetery is symbolic of some of the species that will be disturbed by a pipeline like that. And this is an art project. Uh, we hope to copyright it. And uh, we hope that in some way uh, this we can do this in other places. There's a plan for one up on the mountain above here, about a, about a um, mile up there. Uh, and every location has a different species count. We were kind of limited here. We thought we'd do 30, but 20 is what we got done. Um, as fits the bill. If you know people that have land that would like to do one of these that is along the planned route, that would be a good thing. Um, this may wind up being a power, protect our water, heritage, and rights project, and, and funded by them. And that would be great, because then we don't have to look for the nation. So, that's the story of the Endangered Species Cemetery Pipeline Project. Give Mark and, and all the people who worked on this a big hand because it's, it's he don't want a big hand. He wants a big hand. He wants to see this. Yeah, I just like to see this uh, in other places and other. And if anybody is interested in doing it, it or knows of a place, I have kids. I have ties to this community as well, from our county. And a lot of you know me. And I want to show of hands, Summers County. This here from Summers County. These guys over here, I know are. Then we got some people from Greenbrier County, this, this guy, some people coming in. Monroe County. Okay, so. And John Jill's on their way to come to Birmingham and Elder Sam, but they won't be here. Okay, right. they'll be here. So we got some other people coming. Where are you from? Right here. Right here? Okay. Anybody from. I know we got a young lady back here who's from Canada who's doing some media stuff. All right. So thank her. <laughs> Hello again, Lawrence. <laughs> We have here about five and a half acres. At one point, we owned all the property from here to the airport, mm -hmm. through there, and we were able to protect this area from the invasion of people like the Mountain Valleys, uh, pipeline people. Um, about uh, pre-1900, Governor Hatfield, who was also Senator Hatfield, built a big log lodge over here on the other side of where uh, uh, Cookies Park, big, big, big building. Um, and uh, it was used as a summer home for uh, well, a lot of people, Pretty Boy Floyd, the Hatfields, um, the uh, Enslows from Enslow Steel, and uh, the governor and uh, Mrs. Enslow, who was his neighbor, gave the property as a wedding present to their daughter and uh, Mrs. Enslow's son, Charlie Baldwin, by another name, uh, another marriage, I mean and um, they kept it for a long, long time. Mr. Mr. Baldwin was a professional gambler and he, he lost his leg in the First World War and he was addicted to morphine. And um, eventually, uh, Hazel Hatfield left him and she went on and married uh, uh, Ben uh, Fairless, Ben, ben Fairless was Vice President at that time, and then later President of, uh, uh, of the uh, coal company, I mean of the steel company, um, and uh, then later married Governor Stroud of Pennsylvania. Charlie went back to Huntington to live with his mother who administered his morph 
morphine to him. And um, they quarreled over it, and she had a heart attack and died. This is just history. It doesn't have anything much to do with the land. But, uh, and they accused him of murdering her. He brought her jewelry here to put it down the drains at Riverside Inn because he was afraid that they would do that. But in fact, he didn't kill her himself. So uh, he was acquitted, but he was okay. banned by his family. Okay. Nobody would have anything to do with him. So he, he died on, in a railroad shack on the railroad after inheriting about $3 million of her money. Well, at any rate, we opened the Riverside Inn here in that old lodge. Incidentally, that cottage over there where the bathrooms are, if anybody needs to go, that was built by the uh, Basilio and Grogan's. That was a pre-World uh, War II cottage. This is a very old compound. All of these houses were log houses, except that old store there. Uh, and that house up there, there was one up there and they tore it down, built that one. There was one there and they tore it down. And over here on this other side was a great big log uh, skating rink. Um, and anyway, the um, Billy said, your grandmother told, gave me a lot of this history. She knew Mrs. Enslow. And, yeah, he did. Jim Tolley ran the ran the restaurant in the, the inn for a while. But uh, and uh, the Fosters lived over here. Sue and Rodney Foster lived there in that little log house. But anyway, um, we ran it for about 35 years, um, or 30 30 years, and uh, then we used it for a rental property for people to come in and have weddings. And we had uh, some. Uh, folks who pushed a refrigerator back and caught the wall on fire and it burned down about uh, 1999. So that ended that, by uh, that time we'd moved into the hotel. The, the uh, proposed pipeline is going to come down over the hill right here. I'm ready this guy goes by. We'll take out the little log house and take out the little tan house and take out the green garage and probably uh, part of Miss, uh, the Bragg's house right here. And we'll cross the, the property here, and we'll go across the next farm, which is a beautiful little farm down there on the river, and goes under the railroad, and from there it goes out through Lowell and to uh, Monroe County. It goes through Wayside. It's the top of the mountain on the other side of uh, Nelson's place. Uh, it will go into Monroe County. From this point back, it goes all the way up to uh, and over Keeney's Knob, or Keeney's Mountain. That's where my family came from in 1825. Um, and then goes down through to Meta Bridge and out that way toward, heading toward uh, north. Um, I, we talked to them and talked to them and begged and everything else, but they, are, they, they just tell you one lie after another. So I've quit communicating with them. There's just no use in it. You can't get anywhere with it. Does anybody have a question? Yes, did you find the jewelry in the drain? They did find it. What did you do? We didn't find it. So the Huntington police found it. <laughs> and um, Did they give it back to the family? I don't know what they did with it, but they did try Charlie Baldwin for murdering his mother, uh, Francis Enslow, and, but he was acquitted because apparently he told the truth. The old Riverside Inn was, believe it or not, I know everybody thinks I'm crazy because I am. That's a good reason to think it. Um, but the Riverside Inn was haunted, very active haunting. And um, everybody would guess who it was. I'm pretty confident that it was Charlie Baldwin. My father used to gamble with him, and they rode horses up back and forth across the mountain here and, and partied and stuff like that. So. I, I knew a little bit about that before uh, Margaret Tolley, who is Bill's, I mean, not Bill, but his, Andy, <laughs> get turned around, grandmother at the airport up here. Um, and of course, the area of Penn Springs was originally called Stockyards, and it was named Penn Springs after Andrew Pence, who built the hotel here. This is the fifth hotel that was built in Penn Springs. Um, and it was, this one was built about, uh, 1913 after it had burned in 19 and 12 and opened it up and when it opened up in 1918 it was the most expensive and exclusive hotel in the state of West Virginia. It was 14 passenger trains a day stopped here 
there was florist here, a taxi company, and a golf course, and everything. In fact, after World War II, when the um, government turned loose of the Greenbrier, um, and the CNO went to buy it back, they wanted to buy this property because they liked all the open land that goes through here to talk it and to and going up the other way but um, the uh, the fences would not sell to them so they held on to it actually um we're going, we want to walk down we're going to walk down the river just a minute and look where it actually crosses it's been weeded and i think there's enough room but i want to warn you something okay um probably don't want to take your shoes off you don't want to get on the and if they dig that down, uh, you know, they have to dig it down like, what, four feet or six feet or something like that to get that 42-inch pipeline in there, don't they? And look how big these trees are. Um, you know there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Mm -hmm. Look how big these trees really oh, are. Oh, they'll take them right out. I'm sorry, did you say that the pipeline's going to go right through here? Yes, it goes through this lot. Where's that? Well, it's coming down the mountain right there above that little log house. We'll take all those houses out on that side of the road. You know, and uh, they've been telling people all crazy things like you can go under your house. It goes under the river. Here, and goes up through that field over there, right through the middle of it. And it goes under the railroad. And uh, going up, goes on out toward, Mon and go goes through Monroe County. They have absolutely no regard for our environment or our way of life. Y'all can come on down. We didn't need to block the road. We just got stopped here in the middle of it. Federal government for, I was hoping she would be here. I wanted her to talk about this. She works for the federal government in the prison system and stuff for 25 years and put enough money away. She said she always wanted land on the river because all of her cousins or uncles had land on the river and they didn't. So she bought this piece of property here. And as you see, there's a beach over there. Yeah. I was here yesterday just to take some pictures to put on our Facebook page. Tammy was over there with her grandkids yesterday, playing in the river. I hollered at her, she didn't hear me, but she was over there. They were just so adorable. The grandkids were over there, had a little tent set up at the campfire, a little canoe, you can still see the canoe sitting there. Safe and secure. Yep, so, so um, the pipeline, if it's built, will destroy her beach. It'll be gone. And also be the vaporization zone. They said, oh, you can still use it. <laughs> yeah, who wants no to picnic on a pipeline? Yeah. No. And then you'd be vaporized so while right, you're at it. It goes right through her piece of the beach. She said she bought this piece of river because it had the beach. Well, it goes through this field, too. This is a Wiseman property. It used to be the Comer property. And that is that is a kind of a square farm, 30 acres. And they're going from this corner to the other corner so there'll be two triangles on either side of the right-of-way oh and when uh, Ms. Wiseman questioned how she's going to get to the other side and to uh, you know to hay bale or something and they said oh you won't have any problem just go up and get on the CNO right-of-way and go down the right-of-way uh, and you can get to the other side of your property and there's a big gully over there that all of us could be piled in and it would still go up here and they she said well there's a gully down there and they said you can build a bridge over there so uh another thing about Amazing. this river and you you might want to chime in on this one so uh the greenbrier river starts in northern west virginia in one of the up in pocahontas county northern pocahontas county and it's possible i don't know it's the longest free free flowing, free -flowing. river in the east it's a national Stream, uh, wild and scenic stream is what it's called, right? So, so this is supposed to be left scenic and natural. And of course, they're going to put concrete barriers, and that's real natural here. They're about to put concrete mesh, they call it, what do they call it? Uh, retention. Retention. No, I don't know. They got some fancy name for it. Yeah, they have to. It's just, going to be, it's, it's just going to be concrete blocks on the bottom of the river and on the side of the river and over there on that side so that nobody. Uh, when we have floods here, June 23rd, pictures, we all say it was almost in the road right there. Oh, it has been over the road. And it has been it's over been the road. It's been over the road. Time. That's the reason that camp sits up in the air over there. It wasn't built. It had two bedrooms and a bathroom on the, on the first, on the ground floor. And so we took them out to that little cottage right there and the one next door to it have been, been flooded so many times. We raised it above the road so the water runs down the road. So we have a we have one of the most active earthquake areas in the in the 
east. It's called yep. the Giles Seismic Zone. Mm -hmm. But this area here is just outside of the Giles Seismic Zone. But they're located on the Creighton Fault. And Creighton's just back over here. Well, I can tell you what, right down the road here, ain't five or ten miles right below the flea market thing. There's a man's farm on the left that I drove up in there, and he had a great big crate crater right out through the east. That's the karst. That, well, the earthquake cracked her open up through there a few that's years the ago. Yeah, that's the That's not five miles. The airport's only a mile. Well, just a couple miles down the road. So yeah. what's their, how are they intending to cut through the river? Or are they, are, is this, and is this the only Greenbrier River crossing? It's the only Greenbrier River crossing. So are they doing horizontal directional drilling? No. So they're doing an open cut method? Uh, is yes. that what they've The, the, the most recent plan, let's go first. The most recent plan is they will build a causeway halfway out in the river, build the pipeline, cover it. Like dam it up. Yeah, it's, right. a, yeah. it's called a wet cutter. I think it's called a wet cutter, maybe. Okay. Yeah, they do one side and then they and channel the water side. around. Yeah, and then they, they have to do the other side and yeah, channel. And then like, a, lo like yeah. a lot of places, uh, I forget what they said to the DEP, Washington DEP. They told Washington DEP that there was uh, how many feet of uh, topsoil on the river? In the river bottom, bottom. Oh, I, I don't know, but the the, the bedrock it's, is about 24 inches under the water here. They said there was five feet of. Now, over in Monroe County, on a creek that I live on, they call the Nares of Hand Creek. Well, the Hand Creek. One of the things they tell people, they said there was 87 inches of topsoil where they proposed to cross Hand Creek. Oh God. Well, I took. We had DEP up there the day after that, and they looked at us as it's flat bedrock, mm -hmm. solid bedrock. There's no eight inches of topsoil there. Mm -hmm. And the similar thing here, what they said here was totally not true, mm -hmm. as they have in many other places. So right. what they've said about this spot is like in many places they've said, the Appalachian Trail, Indian Creek, Hands Creek. You can wade across this river now, it would be up to your waist because the river's high. But in normal times, you can see, you have to carry a boat to get and through also here. also they're going to thin wall that 42 yeah. inch pipeline. It's a beautiful stretch of the river. 42 inches would have to be buried yeah. in the bedroom. All of this area that's in here, we've left growing because this is a commercial sewer system in here. We, we intend to put a primitive campground with no footprint in here, you know, for uh, campers. That was our reason for keeping it this way. And uh, we, uh, so all the area that you see that's green in here is a, is going so to be. I just wanted you to see the river. People hadn't been. It's found in the upper New River watershed area, yeah. and I know that they're working, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is working on getting it out to comment. They thought it would be spraying, but things are trying to slow down with endangered species, but that will probably be something they'll be talking about. I'll go down here before you outside. I'm awkward. Oh, I know. Old Elias, Jane, Cleb, Mark Tanner up, Mickey Hornick, if y'all came to the, the thing, they came to do the uh, corn planting in the region. We did the cookies place last year, if you was there, beautiful place. Um, so, uh, since a lot of things have happened in the past year, they're now fighting the Keystone XL again. Mickey spent eight months at Standing Rock, right? It was just part of what you will say. So Mickey was supposed to, uh, Art, the Facebook friend Art said he's just so looking forward to coming back and seeing everybody. That was back in the winter. It was about two weeks ago. It says, "Well, things are so busy here, I can't come." It was supposed to be They're Art. fighting the Keystone. They're fighting the Keystone. Yeah. He's got responsibilities at the farm and stuff. It's funny because I post something on my Facebook page or like put a picture of bells of hay. In two minutes, Art says, "Them are some good-looking bells of hay." He's a good farmer. Uh, I, so I talked with him a lot. So Mickey and who else was supposed to come? His girlfriend, who's a, another. Uh, Maurice Whitebull, right? She was going to come. So they were supposed to come to do the blessing and all this That's stuff. Good. And I actually had to invite Mickey to spend last night on top of Peter's Mountain, and he was all looking forward to all this. And 
And then he had a motorcycle accident. Yeah. Did we, can we wait to plan? I would like to. Right there. Well, come here, come here. Yes. Let's, 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 let's. Hey guys, we need to finish through this ceremony here right quick. And then, so Nick and C was in a motorcycle accident on Thursday and in the hospital. You have, have you talked to him in the last day or so? I've not been able to. Cookie! You talked to him, Mickey, so what did he tell you? Yes, and what I want to tell y'all is I talked to him the other day and he highly regrets that he can't be here with us, our brother Mickey C. He's wonderful. He'd be right here and he's here with us in spirit now. And so I remember him in prayer because somebody actually pulled straight out in front of him on his motorcycle a few days ago. He had laid down his motorcycle and he got some broken bones and things out of the deal, but he said he is going to be all right. So thank God, you know, because he motorcycle wrecked somebody. You know, he pulled right out in front. He said he had to lay it down. Mm -hmm. But uh, his, his thoughts and prayers is with all of us too. And I want to thank you. Thank you coming for coming over here from Bold Alliance and everything to help us. And we just love all you all and all you mountain angels for coming out to fight this battle because we've got to stand together. We're here as a little skeleton crew, but y'all got it in. You got the far in. And if you need to light somebody up, you just have to light them up. And, because and we need to go. I think we need to go up here to Washington or go to Charleston. Or let's just go to Jim Justice's yard <laughs> and camp out or take signs or, you know, do something. Start digging for a pipeline. So, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nick C sent me a message this afternoon and said he wanted to thank everybody for their thoughts and their prayers. And he definitely intends to recover and be here uh, later. Um, he, he fell in love with this area last year from Roanoke to Monroe County to Lewis County. He really fell in love. He's been here a couple times since. Now, she's got a, we, we have. Two to local horn. You want to tell about two to local horn? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Will you stay right here? Cookie? You can stay up here. I would like if we could form a circle, if people would be willing just to come together a little closer. And um, so I just was going to read about the two to local horn. Out of respect for Mikasi being a, a tribal leader from the Ponca Nation, um, we are not holding an official ceremony at all for the Ponca corn, but I did bring this corn that is actually more uh, indigenous to this region. Um, and I'd like to read this message from the donors, those who have given this corn uh, to us to use here for planting. And I also would like to add that I think, you know, even though we do not have uh, tribal representation here, like we were hoping to with Mikasi, that I think the spirit of what he does and what we all are doing is to plant in the ground seeds of hope and seeds of strength and seeds of perseverance to keep going. And I think that's, you know, coming together here tonight, every single one of you is here because you obviously care about the land and water and our very lives in Appalachia. And life, exactly. So that is why we're here, is to, to plant seeds that give hope. Um, so if, if you would join in, I'm going to read this, and I would like to offer an opportunity to go around and for you to, to bless the seed in whatever way you would like to. Um, people have prayed out loud or said something out loud or said something to their group or say something silently. It's just a chance to touch the seed that has been given from another community. Yes. So, I'm going to read this. Dear friends and neighbors in the resistance, this sacred red corn from the Tutelo tribe is our gift to you from the fertile ground of the left bank community of Floyd County, Virginia. We offer it to you with strong prayers and fervent intentions that it be planted in the fertile earth of your sacred ground and grow tall and strong as protection against the threats and hazards of the fossil fuel industry. Together we will work towards building a new nation where we are all committed to cherishing the earth, honoring our ancestors, and acting as good stewards of the shared planet. May you honor and cherish these seeds of resistance and assistance and work together to build community around your common goals to bring the people together around our shared survival. With love and respect, preserve Floyd. So this is from Floyd County, Virginia. And I know many of you know about Floyd County and their fierce efforts at fighting the pipeline. And this has been revitalized over the last several years as Tudelo corn. 
planted and harvested, planted and harvested, and they've shared their seeds with you today. So to our friends in Floyd from Summers, Monroe, Greenbrier, and all parts far and near, we, we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, and God the, bless you. We appreciate you the, sharing his words and good wisdom. Well, we'll get the people who can help plant the two to look one up here. But we also have, we also have, except we'll put that up there in the first row or two. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so the corn that we have, there's some of this corn was given to us last year by Nicosia and Art and the Old Alliance people, Old Nebraska people. So we have some lots of corn. We also have some corn here that was actually grown in Monroe and Greenbrier County, I think, where this came from. There may be some Lewis County corn here, but it's cross-pollinated. So it's not official Ponca corn. It's cross-pollinated with our cookies. Uh, Cherokee, too. <laughs> so she had it down at her place and cross-pollinated with her garden corn. And so we had some cross-pollination. So garden corn this is a kind of a, a, a meeting of the right. corn world. Mm -hmm. and, and one other thing, okay. well, before we plant this, so we have you want to talk, we'll, we'll do a water ceremony right before we plant this. Well, she's at the corner. Yeah. Okay, so. I was going to do the question. She got down with her corn. You want to give people a chance? Okay. Yeah. Just giving a little bit of, of, of solitude and silence. I'm going to start with you tomorrow. For our kids and our future, may it not have pipelines. God's beautiful creation of life, protection of our life security. The creator of this earth, in Washington and everywhere else in the world, what they're doing is destroying this world completely. And they better start keeping another in this world. Seeds grow into more seeds. They are all grown into more seeds. Son of prayer. Mm -hmm. For peace and restoration. Is that possible? I just take some of the Thank you, bro. Sacred corn right here. Let's hope as the sun as the sun shines on this corn and it grows to harvest. Let's hope that the pipeline falls and never runs through anybody else's county and let it burn itself out with the people. Cookie, why don't you plant that up in the first row or two and then everybody else that has the corn that, that we gave to you. Do we want to, if anybody wants to anybody join else in wants line. To, anybody else want to? Well, let's go back to this one right here. Yeah, there was a lot of money here. We have a hotel here. We have a tree here. The Girls Academy, Greenbrier Academy. That uh, Carolyn brought from Bold Apple last year. We got some. We got a tree back here from Liz Toby planted last fall. Uh, a member of her parents. Liz Toby is with. Uh, 
preserve giles the little place that grew there so she brought a that tree down there ashby pardon me what kind of tree is that down there at liz planet uh cherry hey cherry hey there. So here's a new tree, a dogwood from Old Appalachia, Carolyn Brock. We're going to do a water service. If you have water, come here. Everybody gather around. Water blessing. We're not going to call it a therapy. Well, a blessing. So we did this. Uh, we've done this in, in Monroe County and some other places. Um, this is uh, not as formal as some of them you see, but we have Ricky. The man with the shovel and the hoe, he went down to the river a while ago and took his bucket. And if you look in this bucket, it's Greenbrier River water, it actually has the tadpoles in it. So it's, it's, it's got the life from the Greenbrier River, which drains all of northern West Virginia. So I'm going to put that in this bucket. I brought that. So another thing we have. Um, Peters Mountain is a major thing. That's where the Appalachian Trail, that's where they proposed to cross the Appalachian Trail is on Peters Mountain in West Virginia, on the Virginia border. People forget, forget that. And you know another thing, since we did that thing about the cultural attachment, you'd think that would be under some kind of federal protection still yet. Yep. So uh, this water is comes from uh, not too far up. Cookie's actually on the board of directors of this water company. Yeah. And this water comes out of Peters Mountain judged the number one best water in the world seven years in a row. Yeah, and it's still is the best water in the world. International water yeah. testing. There's several springs in Peters Mountain that is. The whole water. mountain the whole mountain's full of water. That's where we all live. There's off hundreds of springs on Peters Mountain that's gonna be so we have this no pipeline water and so I didn't drink it all. I'm gonna add a little bit of the uh, Peters Mountain no pipeline water into it. Somebody brought some water. Whose water is this? We've got to protect our Somebody water. Somebody brought this okay. water. We're going to have to get up and do something. And you got this from where? Take your pitchforks or your pistols, wherever you got. We better be doing okay, something. Okay, Stephen, where? Tell me. This is some more Monday County water that Terry, from Gap Mills that Terry brought. Okay, who brought it? Harvey and Amy brought it. So there's some more water from Monday County. Carolyn, you want to talk about your water? Thank you. So this water was, is actually from West Virginia, Virginia, it's from many different landowners and people who brought their water to an event on Saturday and it was actually blessed and prayed over by a Catholic priest, a Methodist minister, a Native American Sioux tribe member, a Quaker woman, and a ceremony leader. So this is like way combined blessed water. And I'm not going to pour all of it in because I need to save some for Wednesday's planting, uh, the, the seeds of resistance planting. So we're spreading. This has been, this has been shared on all the other uh, planting events that we've had. We had two yesterday. So I'm going to add this to that as well. And there, I think there's a clover flower blossom in here too. Okay. Just for the That's for a good measure. Mm. That's enough. Because i got two gallons of stuff put in there. That bucket's kind of small. So... Um, when I did this last spring, I asked people to bring water from all their springs and their wells. And so these two jugs of water are, I've been running around the last few days collecting water from springs and wells and creeks. So it's got a, a Hands Creek and Indian Creek and Rich Creek and some springs and some people's wells and uh, even a rain barrel. Somebody had a little bit out of a rain barrel. So this is from all around Monroe County. and. Um, I don't think I got out of the county this time to get this. So this is more water from people's well springs and creeks and streams. Uh, I actually got this from where they want to cross the Indian Creek and where they want to cross Hands Creek. I went to those and, and uh, Dana also gave me some water out of Peters Mountain on a stream that's going to cross in Peters Mountain. So we'll add all this water. Good to clean. So we have about four gallon of a lot of water, and and as uh, it's done, water's life. They're going to destroy our water, people. They may say they're not. There's no way you can dig 
a 10 foot trench and not through, especially through forest areas which they have in Monroe, Summers, Giles, Montgomery, even down in Rona, even in the Roanoke some, you cannot. And I'll have to, we'll take that bucket full, we'll put this on the corn. Is that what we'll do? Put it on the corn? Yeah, we'll put some corn. of this on the corn. And Green has got her drinking water out of the Greenville water system. So it's come down to Peter's Mountain. <laughs> Oh my gosh, tadpoles. Yeah, there's actually no, tadpoles. Water is tadpoles. life. <laughs> there's actually tadpoles in this, yes. Ricky, Ricky got... Take it. Take, uh, take the bucket. Sorry. Or take the Use that. We need to deal from Green and Summers County. Summers County people. We'll save a little bit of don't use that bottle. Right. I drink out of that bottle. <laughs> you don't want to drink a I refresh the water. These bottles are going to be hard to find because the company that does this got sold out to a company in Florida and they won't bottle this water anymore. So, we'll get about. Now, we go to get about four people up there because it takes a three hour hike. With tadpoles. You know, the Indians used to actually put the fish and the frogs in the corn. So we were in a meeting, we were in a meeting uh, in Save Monroe last winter, and Joe Chasnoff, one of our members, says, We need to have a ritual. We don't need this DEIS. I call it Great Works of Fiction by FERC. Um, and we have a big, uh, you know, some places are burning their easement agreement. Yeah, not only did they want to practice, they they actually, so, what was that word they done to this book? They fractured it. Well, so anyway, so this is, there's like 16, 20,000 pages actually of stuff been filed. This is what they give to us. And it actually, the lies actually started with that picture. They didn't wait till you turn inside the book. This is a picture of the Appalachian Trail on top of Peter's Mountain. For anybody who doesn't know that. And they got this picture from Andrew Downs in Roanoke, the, uh, the uh, executive director. If you see the entire picture, they cropped it so you couldn't see anything. So it'll make it look like there's no impact. But if you if you see the entire picture, which I have and I have posted, you can, you can see from there to Keeney's Knob. But they took that out of the picture. But they put on the DEIS. They didn't want people to see that you could see for 40 miles. So we have a bonfire. <laughs> Anybody who'd like to have a page or two of this to go? Oh, I'd like to have a big piece of it. Let me just rip that right okay, out. Look, you can... I'll tell you what, everybody better start ripping and ripping this stuff up. And if you need to Anybody rip up some of these people that are at right this Okay, nobody wants to get close because to Because you know what? When it's our water, look, it won't even rip. Well, i tell you what, it's just like it's a gas oil. The they think it's garbage they made up. Pipe blood shit they right. The garbage. Oh, it's hot like those lies. Oh my lies. God, man, that's not good. <laughs> well, hopefully you'll come back. Well, whatever put off is in this paper right here. God help them never put a gas line in that can explode and rupture the destroyed mother of and the people there are. Here you go, pick up. Here's a few more sheets. Okay. You can do some for Amy. Oh, okay, yeah. My eyelashes seem tired to recuperate. What eyelashes? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I used to have them. They were nice. Nice when they lasted. Bird and eyelashes for a good cause. I'd rather be my eyelashes than a bunch of people. May everything about this pipeline go up in this star. It may just be the only <laughs> thing that it ever shoots anywhere. Grab that piece. You have to grab that piece. There's why it needs to happen. Anything to do with the gas pipeline, anything to do with destroy Mother Earth, our water, every bad thing that they've done to us, they can all burn in a hot place. Okay. Right now, this past Thursday, we could go. They organized a resistance uh, uh, task force that um, met the, met the uh, oh, surveyors yeah. on their back side of their property. And the Roanoke Times did a story on it, but they also have a video. Online, there's a video, and I saw this. 
And this young lady here got right in the face of a bunch of big people. I don't think you all need to be here. You need to leave. I was yelling across the creek, actually, because they were they were not listening. They just kept coming. So they uh, they don't know what they're tangling with. All of us. Oh, great day. Yeah, I saw that, and I showed us. I shared with some other people. I just read the article, but watch the video. And that four minute video was as powerful okay. as anything I've, yeah, as anything that they wrote a put on, on there.